is one name I love to call The name of Jesus Demons can't withstand No other name I know I can deliver At the mention of the name Every knee must bow There is one name I love to call Welcome to Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted International Ministry. Please subscribe, like and share the video. No other name I know I can deliver I mention of the name Every need must bow Tonight, I brought the word of the Lord to you. And this word of the Lord tonight is a heavy subject. But, you know, we must address it even as believers. Because suicide does not know whether you are a believer or not. And recently, we heard former Miss America that took her life. She jumped from the top floor and then killed herself. And we must often, people often ask, why would successful people, even people that are millionaires, film stars, people that are famous, why would they want to take their own lives? Why would somebody decide to take their own lives? The, one of the reasons why people kill themselves is the silent hidden cry of the heart. Silent hidden cry of the heart. You know, in the natural, when somebody is hurting, if you have a cut and you have a bandage, a plaster, people can see it. But when it comes to the issue of the heart, people cannot see what is actually happening in your heart. So tonight, I want us to look at this subject, why some people take their lives, what, I, what will lead somebody to want to kill themselves, what is the main cause of suicide, or some of the reason why people want to take their lives so we're going to look at them tonight in the name of jesus and i pray that god almighty will himself minister healing to those that are broken hearted in the name of jesus you know i am a practical person i am a i believe that what the journey god has taken us through is not for ourselves most of the time it's for people that are coming behind us i have been depressed you know i say it all the time i myself have been depressed in the past nobody's look no even the prime minister of a country can be depressed people the top people we don't even believe can be depressed it could be maybe a sudden love loss of a, um, a loved ones it could be a mental health issue. It could be relationship. It could be through sickness. It could be loss of a child. It could be loss of a marriage. Marriage broke down, breaking down. So there are so many factors that can lead someone to want to take their life. And most times, the reason why people want to kill themselves is when the enemy comes, Satan comes. And whisper, why don't you take your life? Your, your life is nothing. You are hopeless. Oh, you are not going to come out of this. You are going to die in it. Just throw yourself in the train. Just, you know, commit suicide. Jump out of the window. Take an acid. So many crazy things the devil will be suggesting to your ears. And that's why you must guard your mind. You must guard your heart. Your heart is the key factor in every believer. Look, don't say because I'm a Christian. Some Christians do get depressed. Why? When an event suddenly happens to them and they are not able to take care of it. For instance, maybe somebody dies. Yo, it could be your partner. You've been together for many years. Suddenly, one person is gone. And most times, it's not as if uh, maybe you know that this person is going to die. Maybe it just came on suddenly. And 
your heart is broken beyond you know men i say men are the i would say are the worst victims why men are told don't cry you're a man you must you know don't cry men don't cry it's a lie it's okay for men to cry it's okay for a man to cry please do cry because when it's one of the ways of letting out your pain your you know when you cry you're a human being doesn't mean because you're a man you shouldn't cry people say that you're a man just hold up and compose yourself you're a man don't cry no please do cry even the widowers they are the worst i think they are the worst group. women we show our emotion but these ones they lock it in they lock their emotions in they don't show their emotions they you don't even know that they are in pain the next thing you hear is maybe the person is throwing themselves on the train or they jumped the, or they jumped off the cliff these and most of the people that are depressed they can disguise it somebody can be you can be living with somebody in the house you will not know that that person is depressed is depression is a thing of the heart is a pain of the heart is something that is the heart is bleeding but nobody is seeing it let's repack this lady young lady that died in america miss a whole miss america she threw herself off the building what will cost somebody like that she's successful she's famous maybe she's even she has many but all these things does not heal the heart oh she car amazon that if you ever see um somebody who is really depressed you look into their eyes you can see this soul sitting down there many years ago i used to work as a as a social worker from people that were suffering challenging with um, mental health and most times you go to visit some of them they have they're suffering from bipolar disorder one minute they are high one minute they are down but if you look when they are down when they are down when you look at them my god your heart yourself if you are not careful even as a worker you will begin to feel you feel their pain you feel that this person is sitting down there looking at you and when you ask they said meg there is no point living i just want to kill myself that's what you hear all the time and you begin to minister love to them you begin to minister the word of god to them even though at work you're not allowed to minister the, the word of god you know every one of us at one point in our life we will go through a period of of, of crushing of our hearts a period when our heart is going through pain when somebody if flick pain on you in your heart it could be so traumatic so tonight i i was just praying and as the lord spirit of god so i had this for few days now and the lord was just bringing it especially when this young girl died 30 year old girl in the prime of her life took her own life so tonight this ministration is is geared to those but people that maybe you are hurting and you are covering up. I brought the word of the Lord to you today. That God sees that pain. God sees that pain you are going through. And he's taught for you a thought of God. So I'm going to bring some scripture before I proceed further tonight. I just wanted to lay a foundation for it. He said, for, the, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. And the future jeremiah 29 11. that's god's word for you but the devil will tell you there's no hope for you the devil will whisper to you why don't you kill yourself why don't you kill yourself what kind of life are you living why don't you kill yourself if you are good why would the man leave you why would the woman leave you it's a lie of the devil you always remember that the devil has come to steal to kill and to destroy but god has gone to give you life more abundantly in the name of jesus Please, if any of us are depressed, reach out to somebody in love. Reach out. You can trust. There is always going to be one person that you can open up to. That you can say, this is what is going on. This is, I am in pain. Nobody is above the pain. I'm telling you, a prime minister can be, can be depressed. 
He too can go through challenges. There is no one in this world that is above challenges of man. When your heart is broken, nobody can see it. When you are going through terrible pain, no one sees it except you. It's only you that knows that pain. When that knife is like somebody put your, a knife in your heart and is pulling you, you're killing it. But there is a balm in Gilead, Mahara, Mason, Tyre. There is a God that loves you. The one that created you. Don't give up to suicide. Don't believe that lie of the devil that tells you to kill yourself, throw yourself in the train, go and jump on the floor, uh, on the top floor, or jump on top of the on a, a moving vehicle. That is the devil. Remember, Satan has come to kill, to kill and to destroy. But God has come to give us life abundantly. There is always a way out. The thoughts of God are thoughts of good and not of evil for us. You know, in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the God of peace, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Do not be anxious for nothing. I don't know what you are anxious about. Perhaps your business is gone down. Or they want to repossess your house. Or the, I suppose your, one of your loved ones is walked out of you. No. Don't be like the ostrich who buries their head on the sand. Cry out to God. Open your mouth wide in your house. Travel. I give you my own classic, you know. The reason the Lord bait my ministry is through pain. Our ministry is called Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted. Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted. When I, God gave me that name, I laughed. I said, Lord, why are you giving this name? It's Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted. He said, you are laughing. Go to Psalm 147 verse 3. And when I opened that scripture, the scripture says, The Lord, he let the broken in heart and mended their, their wounds. It's only God that can mend this wound. It's only God that can, that, can, that can bring healing, that can bring oil of soothing into your heart. So don't give up. Don't listen to the devil. You know, the scripture I just read in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious for nothing. About anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request. What is it you are going through? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord. I know sometimes you might feel, Oh, I've been praying, God is not here. Even some people are not even believers, they don't believe there is a God. My dear, there is a God. <laughs> there is a God. The one that reached out to me many, many over 20 years ago, there is a God. When the devil came to whisper to, for me to kill myself, I said, there is a God. That that God is alive. That God loves you. I never knew that when I was going through that pain, God was preparing me for my ministry. Today, I can minister to those that are hurting. Why? It's a journey I have been through. I am not ashamed of my past. Because if you are ashamed of your past, you can never minister. So don't look at people that just powder their pain, pancake, you come and sit down, you minister. It's a lie. What has God, what journey have you been through? Where have God, God brought you from? What is it that God has brought you from? Where has God brought you from? Let people see. I like to be transparent. People can relate to you. I say, oh my God, if prophet can go through this hell of a problem and she came out of it, it's a source of encouragement for you. You too will come out. He said, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, we shall fear no evil. No evil. Depression is an evil. Depression is a black blanket, you know, that covers your heart. Covers your mind. The devil comes to whisper to you. You kill yourself. Kill yourself. Nobody loves you. Nobody loves you. If he loves you, he will not have walked away with you. Don't mind. Anybody that walks away from you, that person does not deserve you. You know who you are in Christ. Whoever decided to walk away from you, God is bringing somebody better, much better than that person that walked away. That person was never called to be in the vehicle of the journey of your life. Maybe they just strayed in there. And always remember that 
there are some journey in this journey of life some people that are called for a purpose when that purpose is fulfilled they will go so don't hang on to them as if when they walk away from you that no no don't kill yourself because a man walked out the woman walked out why i was stupid i'm looking back now right when i thought because somebody walked away from me that's the end of my life that's the end of that's the lie of the devil but today i have a fulfilled life i'm happy Oh, Lama Sunday. Today I am preaching the word of God. This is the reason why God created me to minister to those that are that are hurting, to bring the word of healing to those that are in captivity. Hallelujah. So those people that the devil comes to and then come and lie to them. Kill yourself. Remember in the book of Matthew 11 28, he said, Come to me. This is the Lord speaking. All you who are weary and burdened. Did you hear that? Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest for your soul, O Rabbi Sanda. Rest from your problem. Rest from that pain you are going through. Rest. Rest. God will give you rest for your soul. Only call upon him. He said, call upon me on the day of trouble, and I will give you rest for your soul. Mali and Rabashia. Oh, Rabbi Sai Kalema Sanda. I don't know what, what problem you are going through. It could, yours could be financial. You could have taken a loan, you can't pay it back, and the bank is harassing you, your debtors are harassing you, and you don't know where to turn. Turn to God. Hallelujah. Come, we turn to Him. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He said He will not allow you to carry anything you cannot take. Don't kill yourself because the bankers, tomorrow you never know. Somebody, God can raise, put it in somebody's heart to be a blessing to you. So God can raise somebody to remove that debt from you. So don't kill yourself because they, they, they oh they said your house is going to be foreclosed. They want to take my, my house back. The, the, the bank is after you. Especially in this pandemic. There's so many things that is going on in during this pandemic. So many people have lost their businesses, they have lost their homes, some people have their marriages are broken, some people have been depressed. I'm telling you. The rate of mental um, institution, people that were being sectioned in this season were so high. Why? Heartbroken. Depression. Open your mouth wide and tell God whatever you are going through. He said, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. Oh, Lama Saika, to Robert Look, even a whole, uh, doctors can be depressed. Yes, a doctor can be depressed. God bless him, holy. God, you know, doctors can be depressed. Nurses can be depressed. Businessmen can be, a prime minister can be depressed. Even our, our, our majesty can be, any human being can be depressed. Don't, don't be ashamed to tell somebody, look, sister, brother, this is what I'm going through. Don't keep it to yourself. When you keep, when you bottle it up, that is when the, the bleeding is worse. Perhaps somebody died. Your loved one died. And you are looking at how can my life be fixed? This person that I've lived my life with, now suddenly the person has gone. Know that God is with you. God is with you. In every journey of our life, God is, us, is with us. You know, that's why I love the Holy Spirit, you know. The Holy Spirit, when Jesus was going, he said, I will send you another like me. Who is like him? Holy Spirit is being called to walk alongside of us. So that journey of life, don't you cannot carry that burden. That's why he gave us this word in Matthew eleven twenty eight. He said, "Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. Rest from that problem. Rest from that pain. Suicide is not the answer. You know, a whole Miss America threw herself from the building because." The devil was whispering to her, yo, there's no hope for you. There's no hope for you. Kill yourself. Maybe especially, you know, one of the reasons a lot of people, some people kill themselves. Maybe they give them nasty diagnosis. They say, no, I'm not going through this nasty diagnosis. Instead of me going through this pain, they, they, you know, they think it's a shorter route. They will kill themselves. How many people have God healed? How many people have God miraculously healed? Our God is a God of second chance. Even if the doctor have told you you are going to die tomorrow. 
That doctor is not your author. He is not the author and the finisher of your life. He is not your creator. He didn't create you. If you look unto God, call, call unto God on the day of your trouble. He will heal you. He will bring an answer for you. The Lord will never forsake you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, in the book of Revelation 21 verse 4, he said, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Glory be to God. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Glory be to God. No more death. The Lord will wipe every tears away from you. Whatever that source of pain you are going through, Leandro, Kapara, Masayaka, whatever is the source of that pain, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you even think of in the name of Jesus. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Especially those people that maybe they, 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 they are not advanced in age, they say, God, how where do I start? God is not asleep. He knows what you are going through. Mariando Soporamaha. He knows your pain. He told you in Jeremiah 29. 11, he said he's taught for us a thought of good. Thought of good. So whatever you are going through, in the, in the next few years, you will look back and lift up your holy hands. And you begin to magnify the Lord. Why? Because when you were passing through that journey, you never knew you would come out of it. I'm telling you. Over 20 years ago, when my enemy was depressed, I never thought I would see the light of day. I even contemplated killing myself. You see, I am a practical person. I like to be open. So you can know that this woman that comes here and ministers the word, maybe she's looking prim prim. <laughs> it's God. I have been through that valley. I have been through shadow of death. But God was with me. He did not leave me alone. He did not leave me. He did not abandon me. Don't think of, look, your business could have fallen down. They could have come and possess your house. Maybe you are sleeping rough. Maybe your health has failed you. Maybe a man or woman has walked out of you. Your child is depressed. Or oh, it could be so many factors. So many factors. Why somebody will wake up and decide. It's not that they inject you. You make up your own mind. You want to kill yourself. Why? Depression. Depression. Depression can do that. So, when you are depressed, please speak to somebody. Open your mouth. Tell them what you are going through. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. When you close your mouth, nobody knows what you are passing through. When you close your mouth, oh, when you are in bed, you close, you just curl up in bed and you are crying. Your crying cannot change anything. But when you open your mouth and say, Lord, I cannot go on on my own, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, this body is too much for me, Jesus. Lord, arise, help me. Help me, Lord, help me, Jesus. When you cry to God, he will hear you. Oh, Lama Sondayaba. You know, in Psalm 121, he says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. So, when we lift up to, to our eyes to the hill, to God, our creator, he will come through for you. The Lord will come through for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has not abandoned you. In years to come, look at now. I look back and I say, wow, Lord, I did not know that the time I was passing through that pain. That was the pain time of crushing. I was in the wilderness experience. I was going through the wilderness of life. And it was going through um, hardship. And I thought that was the end. You know? The devil knows that there is a word, there is a prophet in me. Even though I was one of the prophets. But, you know, when you are a child, you act like a child. But when I came into my season, the devil knows that in this season of my life, I'm going to be ministering the word. So he wanted to abort that, that um, my destiny. Whispering lies. So it could be the same thing with you right now. The devil is telling you, kill yourself. Jump on the train. Throw yourself on the street. Let the car crush you. Take a poison. How many people I had they were even drinking rat poison? My God. The devil is a bastard. He's a liar. Don't kill yourself. There's so much more ahead of you. Even if you are in your old age, look at let's look at Sarah. Let's use Sarah as a practical example. Abraham. 
They will believe in God for a child, a promised child. God promised them how you are going to be father of nations. But today, that prophecy has been fulfilled. But at that time, it took them, Sarah was 90 years old when she took in. Can you imagine? So even just look at it now. A 90 year old person, definitely that person's womb has strength. It has rich strength. But <laughs> the God, our God is the God of creation. Yes. You know what he did? He gave, um, the Lord gave Sarah the womb of a 16 year old. Yes. There is nothing too hard for our God. He said, is there anything too hard for me to do? Absolutely nothing. With God, all things are possible. Our God is a God of miracle. Our God is a God of suddenly. Suddenly he will come in his temple and he will help you. He will help you. He will lift up your hand from that dungeon. He will lift up you from that pit you are in the name of Jesus. It is in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 to 10. The word of the Lord said, we are hard pressed on every side, just like you are now, but not crushed. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, not perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are pressed on every side. We are pressed. So you are, what you are feeling now, you are pressed on every side. The season you are now. Look, there is a season. Every uh, The Lord gave me an analogy many, many years ago. He said, daughter, do you know the butterfly? I said, yes, Lord. He said, how many stages does the butterfly have? I said, four stages. The egg stage, the lava stage, the cocoon stage and the full-fledged butterfly and the lord said to me the reason why so many people are frustrated is because they don't know what season what stage of life they are you might be thinking you are in the lava stage where you are still an egg you might be thinking you are a full-fledged butterfly when you are still a lava so when you know the season you are up, it will help you to say okay lord this is the season where i'm at Tell the Spirit of God, Lord, show me what season I am. Because some of us, we are frustrated because we don't know where we are. We don't know what season we are. When the Lord gave me this analogy of the butterfly, I was so relieved. I said, wow. So some of us might even think that we are in the full-fledged um, adult stage. We are just eggs. So because you are just eggs, you are feeling frustrated. You have started your ministry. I started this ministry about 17 years. This is my 18th year in ministry, right? full-time ministry and then so you look at yourself and say my god some of my mates that were you know even those that come after me they have built they have built buildings oh they are packing crowd no never compare yourself to anybody look even if it's one person i'm able to minister to i am happy if it's 10 souls i win to christ i am happy the Bible says, it says, if one soul is one in heaven, the angels are rejoicing. It didn't say crowd. It didn't say thousands of people. No. You see, this is where we are missing it. We are looking at other people's slain and we are complaining. Be satisfied with what God is giving you. Don't look at another man's slain. Don't look at another man's church. Don't look at another man's business. Be content with what God has given you. If you are content, you will never be disappointed. Because, look, these fingers are not equal, right? If God gives or decides to give somebody 200,000 church, so to God be the glory. If he gives me 10, so be it. See, he knows what I can co cope with. Don't compare yourself. Stop comparing yourself. Comparing, comparing. Don't walk in another man's lane. That's another thing. Hallelujah. So, and then when we also look at it, um, I want to bring a lot of scripture to us tonight. Um, Psalm 46 verse 1 to 2 says, God is our refuge and strength. Say it. God is my refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Did you hear that? And ever-present help in trouble. God is with us. Therefore, we will not fear. Hmm. It's fear. The devil is a liar. Fear. Will torment fear is a tormentor. Fear is who come to paralyze the victim. You say, let me read this again. 
Psalm 46 verse 1 to 2. It says, God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. God is our refuge. He's our strength. He's our helper in the trance of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Those who know their God, they shall do mighty exploit. Those who know their God, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Even if the doctor said, oh, your, your cancer is a, a stage 4 cancer. That is the report of the devil. That's the point of the... the that's, look, all the doctors are doing, they are just giving you their professional opinion. Yes? Whose, whose opinion will you believe? Whose report will you believe? I choose to believe the report of God. Who says, as who told me that in Psalm 118 verse 17, he said, Wait, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the living God. You put your name there. Put whatever is dying in your life. Say, you this thing, you will not die in my life. Psalm, 94, uh, Psalm 91 verse 16. With long life, will the Lord satisfy you? Look, if you know the word of God, if the word of God in our hand is the ammunition in our hand. Is the grenade in our hand. Is the atomic bomb, is the nuclear bomb in our hand. When we release this word of God, things will change for our own good in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's why God is our refuge. He's our hiding place. He's our rock. He's our fortress. Oh, Lama Sonda Yaba. He's our ever present help in the time of trouble. So, wherever you are going through, even when you are in the dungeon, God is with you. Did you remember the three Hebrew boys? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? When the king threw them, these Hebrew boys, into the fire, who was the fourth man? Jesus was the fourth man. He was already in, the, in that fire. What? To neutralize the power of the, the, power of the, of the fire. Even their hair, not a single smoke was in their hair. If God, look, God does not, is no respect of man. What he did for this Hebrew boys, he is able to do for you today. In the name of Jesus. So don't give up. Don't listen to that devilish voice telling you, kill yourself. Commit suicide. Kill yourself. What will make a whole Miss America, former Miss America, to kill herself? It, look, that's why I titled this message, The Silent Hidden Cry of the Heart. The heart, when it's bleeding, nobody sees it. The heart, when it's broken, nobody sees it. Hallelujah. Nobody sees it, but God sees everything. He searches our hearts. He knows where we are. And he said his thoughts for you and me are thought of good and not of evil. To bring us to good, expected end. Hallelujah. Psalm 71 verse 20 says, Though you have made me see troubles. Though we have, God has made us see trouble, many and bitter. So you could be, your life could be feeling bitter right now. You, God is telling us, say, though you have made me see trouble, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. God will restore you. Restoration is coming for you. In the name of Jesus. My brother, my sister, this is your hour of restoration. The last few days, the Lord just kept putting this scripture strong in my heart. Go out there and talk. Perhaps you are watching me now and you are contemplating uh, killing yourself. Tell the devil, no, not under my watch. It's not going to happen. You will not die, but live. You have so much ahead of you. Your car, your, your future is colorful. It's your, your future is beautiful. It might not look like that now. I'm telling you, over 20 years ago, when my enemy was low, feeling low, I didn't know that I would come into this season where I am now to minister the word of healing to you. Word of encouragement. That's why I love the, the ministry of Barnabas. Barnabas was an encourager. You know, and we need this ministry of the uh, Barnabas right now in so many churches. When we are speaking the word of God, put the word of God in your mouth. Chew the word of God. Oh, when the devil comes to tell you, kill yourself, say, no, God didn't tell me to kill myself. Long life, God tell the child. Say, long life has the Lord given me. With long life will the Lord satisfy you. You will not die, but live. Whatever you are going through, it's just a phase you are going through. Oh, la Messiah, it's just a journey. It's a phase of part of your life. And you are coming out there stronger. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. For God is with you. God is with us. 
though you walk through the valley. So what you are going through is a valley. It's a valley. You are coming out stronger. You are coming out better. You are coming out in a, in a glorious form. You will look back and say, oh Lord, if only I knew this is what you are doing. Now you begin to lift up your hand. You begin to thank God. You begin to bless the name of the Lord. Look, I have passed through several crushing. Sometimes I didn't feel like getting up. I'm being artifactual to you so that I can encourage you. There is hope in your end. Jeremiah 31 verse 17. There is hope for you. There is hope in your end. So don't kill yourself. Don't listen to that evil voice telling you to go and commit suicide. Oh, there's no more hope for you. Oh, your child, you just lost your child. Oh, your, your husband is walked out of you. Your wife is lost, walked out of you. The child is in prison. Anything can happen. These things come to strengthen us. Whatever journey you are, look, now I am in a better position to minister to you. Why? It's a journey I've been through. I have been through this journey. And God has did his feet. He prepared me. When I was broken, the Lord put me together. He knitted me together. And from your crushing, the Lord told me, out of your broken heart will come healing. Oil is released. You know the ol um, when we, olive, um, olives, when, for you to get um, oil on it, you have to crush it. So that oil is used for so many things. And so, some, so many times God will allow us to go through some journey of life where we feel crushed, where our heart, where our heart is broken. But when you look, look beyond what you are going through. Look beyond this pain now. Look beyond your crushing. Look beyond the God has a special thing ahead of you. God has a special package for you. You know, he said, though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter. You will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will, you will again bring me up. Hallelujah. See, when problem comes, God will bring us a ladder from heaven, right? When that ladder is thrown to you, that, what God wants you to do is to climb that ladder again. Don't sit down and say, oh, I can't get up. The life, my life is finished. That's the devil. That ladder is meant for you to climb up. And when you climb up, you begin to see the light again. You begin to see hope. You begin, joy will begin to come. I'm telling you, if somebody walk out of you, thank God that the person is gone. Why? God is bringing somebody much better. Somebody who will value you. Somebody who will compliment you. Somebody who, who, who will be your encourager. Who will be your cheerleader. That's what God is doing. Don't just think, oh, this person is worth it. Look, that person is not the end of your life. It is not the end of your life. I have been to all this journey and I sit in a better position to, to come tonight and speak the word of hope, word of encouragement, and to bring the word of God to you. Hallelujah. And in the book of um, Psalm 147 verse 3, it is actually the motto of my ministry. It's called, it's, He heals the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. God is the author. He's the one that can heal our brokenhearted. He's the one that brings that bind. He's the one that binds our wounds. You know, when a heart is broken, the heart is bleeding. When, you, like I've covered myself, now nobody knows what is going on inside of me. But the one that created me knows. And that's why he gives us this word. He heals, the Lord heals the broken hearted and binds up our wounds. Glory be to God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't say, I'm going to kill myself. Don't, you know, don't sit in depression. Depression comes to steal your joy. Depression is from the pit of hell. Dep depression is a black blanket that covers us. We cannot see our we cannot see our future because the devil comes to he come to minister lies to you. He's a liar. The devil is a liar. He's the father of all liars. Hallelujah. In the book of John fourteen verse twenty seven, say, "Peace I live with you. My peace I give you." I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Did you hear that? Do not let your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. God is telling you, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled to the point you go and throw yourself on the train. Look, where I live here in Ilford, right? In, in London here. Several times, we'll go to the train station. Somebody's under the train. Why? 
they threw themselves. Hopelessness. The devil comes to, to come and give, give you a lie, a false report. Your life is finished. Especially your business is just crumpled. They just possess your house. You know, your wife will walk out of you. Your husband is gone. Your, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend is walked out and then you want to kill yourself. No! Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There is a hope for you. There is hope. God told us here in John 7, 14 verse 27. He said, peace I live. I live with you. My peace I give you. God gives you peace. And I peace. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let it be afraid. Glory be to God. God loves you. If anybody is telling you that God does not love you, it's a lie. I have, you see, I have tested the Lord. He said, oh, come and test and see that the Lord is good. In fact, the Lord is so good. The Lord is awesome. The Lord is powerful. The Lord is mighty. Never give up hope in life. The devil is a liar. Don't give up hope. God has a better plan for you. It might look bleak right now. It might look hopeless right now. It might say, oh my God, where am I going to start? The man has walked out and he's left you with these children. <laughs> God is with you. Is the ever-present help in the times of trouble, my Lord. If only you put... See, that's why the Bible says, the Word of God says, study to show you, study the Word of God to show yourself approved unto God. Readily dividing the Word of Truth. You see, when you study the word of God, the devil cannot come and tell me now, oh, prophetess, give yourself. I'll tell the devil, get thee behind me. Because I know what the word says. I know what the word of God says. I know the plan of God for me. I know what, what the, God has shown me my future. I've seen it. I've seen a glimpse of what my future is. Our future is rosy. Our future is beautiful. Our future is awesome. It doesn't matter. I mean, some people that are disabled, right? They will look at themselves and say, I can't live like this. Look at them. There's um, a man of God that is, has no limb, no hand. But he's packing stadium, my good God. God has a reason for everything. God has a reason. Whatever you are passing through now, God has a reason, has a purpose for you. Don't throw, what I've come to tell you tonight is don't throw in the towel. Don't believe the report of the devil. Don't believe the lie of the devil. I don't care. Even if the doctor have told you, oh, um, just prepare yourself. You are going to die. Whatever. That's doctor's report. Whose report will you believe? Choose to believe the report of the law. That tells, that says, with long life will he satisfy you. Hallelujah. You know, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, it said, and we know that all things work together for good for those who, who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8:28 says, And we know that all things work together for good for those who have who love him, who love the Lord, right? Who have been called according to his purpose. All things will God work together for you. All things will work together for you. If you do not take anything from this ministration tonight, look, God is sent me to you as his mouthpiece, as his prophet, to speak healing, the word of healing to you, the word of hope and word of encouragement. That nothing you are going to now is only is a, is a temporary phase and is subject to change. Whatever you are going through is temporary, is subject to change. Hallelujah. If I look back over 25 years now, and I say, oh my God, Lord, I never knew that I'll be sitting down here ministering to you. But if the devil had, if I've killed myself, will I be here today to minister to you? No. You see, devil did that. Satan knew that in many, many years time, God is going to use me all over the world. That I'll be his mouthpiece, a prophet to nation. You see, what the devil comes to about, he comes to about your future. It comes to about what the plan of God for you. Don't allow the devil to steal your, your destiny. Don't allow it. You know, I'm a, when, when I still talk about the things of the heart, because it's a journey I've gone through, I am passionate about it. I am passionate about it. And I am sitting here to the glory of God. I am a living testimony to say that God has brought me through here in order to minister hope 
and a future to you. God has brought me thus far to minister hope for you. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't say, don't allow the devil to uh, speak negativity to you. Look, tune your find tune your ear to hear the voice of God, even in the time of depression. When everything seems bleak, when it seems hopeless, God is our ever-present help. Lift up your eyes unto the hill. You know, even if you don't know what to say, just cry, just keep your mouth, just, just say to the Lord, just call his name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. As you are calling him, it will come true for you. Just keep calling him. Call on the name of the Lord. There is a name that has been given under in heaven. And that name is Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. In your hour of trouble, call on the name of Jesus. In the hour of tribulation, call on the name of Jesus. In the hour of depression, call upon the name of Jesus. Call upon him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. In Isaiah 43 verse 18, he said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Hallelujah. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Forget what has happened. Do not dwell on it. That's what the Lord is telling you. Okay. The business has crumbled. There's a hope for you. Look, look tomorrow, God can raise somebody to be a blessing to you. God can raise somebody to be a blessing to you. We do not serve a God that is hopeless. We serve a God that is alive. We serve a God that can feel your pain. I'll give you a testimony. When I was going through my own journey, the day I was contemplating, all right, that I was going to talk myself, there was a man of God that was in Uganda. This man has never met me. I live in England. This man has never met me before. But this man of God said he was in, in his time of prayer. The Lord brought me to him. Go to London. There is a woman who is planning to kill herself. Did you see? Did you see the love of God? This man knew a woman that I used, another pastor. And it was this woman that knew me. And when this man of God came, he said, I don't have any business here in London, but somebody, God brought a woman to me to go and minister to that person. The woman now knew that it's me, so he called me. This man of God was a young man, I remember. He placed his hand when he was talking to me. I was just sobbing because I could not even express the grief in my heart. And he placed his hand on me. He said, in the name of Jesus, I command your heart broken hearted to be healed. I fell down. You know what happened to me? When I rose up from the ground, it was as if the Lord deleted all the pain, the years of pain, that pain that I was feeling so dejected, hopeless. God deleted it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You see, what God did for me, he will do it for you. Don't kill yourself. That's the whole idea tonight. Don't commit suicide. Committing suicide is not the solution. It's not the answer. God is the answer. God is a way maker. God will come through for you. Look today, I am happy. I am a minister of God. I'm going to nations. Why? The devil has seen that. That was why he came with that blanket of depression and told me to clean my, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Some people, that's what the devil 24 hours at. is turning it to your ear. Cock your ear. Put the blood of, begin to, when you are hearing that voice, Put the blood of Jesus in your ear. Cover your ear. Right? Put the blood. Put the blood. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus on my ear. Satan, get deep. Rebuke him. Look, when Satan is turning lies, another classic, Satan is the father of all lies. Many years ago, I went to do a mammogram, you know, here in this country. When you, I think I was over 50 then. And, um, I went to do a mammogram test. Do you know from when I went to do this test, the devil was whispering this. Oh, your enemy has cancer. Your enemy has breast cancer. For days, about two, three days, all I was hearing, your enemy has breast cancer. Until I now realized, I said, this is the lie of the devil. And I said, Satan, get deep behind me. I do not have breast cancer. The bo my body is the body of the temple. It's the temple of the Lord. He cannot have a sickness in the name of Jesus. Immediately, I shut the devil down. You know what happened? 
that voice ceased. The following day or two days after, my result came in was negative. Did you see? But the stupid ne the, the, uh, the devil was whispering evil report to my ears. If, if I did not know who I serve, I will believe the report of the devil. Why? It's come to steal your peace. It's come to steal your joy. It's come to kill, to destroy. That's the work of Satan. But thank God, God has given us, He's come to give us life abundantly. Abundant life. That's what God wants for you. That's what God has for you. The plan of God. That's what God has for you. Don't listen to the devil. And, you know, don't listen to Satan that is telling you to kill yourself. Go and throw yourself in the river. Go and throw yourself over the cliff. Go and throw yourself on the building. Go and throw yourself on the train. Or in front of the car. Or drinking a poison. Overdosing. Or take it to alcohol. Mm -mm. No matter what you are going through. Some people, it could be through abuse. When I say physical, it could be physical abuse. Emotional abuse. That they are, you know, they are fed up in their head. You say, what am I living for? Let me just end it. There is a way out for you. There is a hope for you. Don't kill yourself. Look at Joyce Meyer, right? She went through sexual abuse. But to the glory of God, to the God has turned that. That has become a thing of the past. She preaches this herself. Her life is a living testimony. That God can take out, you can bring somebody out of ashes and turn it to beauty. The same thing God did for me. I, was in, I didn't go through sexual abuse. But emotional. Yes, I was broken. But you see, what I love about the Lord is, the Lord is searching for those people that are broken. Why? So that he can put us together again. He can knit us together again and showcase us. That's what God does. You know, so right, right now you might be feeling hopeless. You might be feeling dejected. You might be feeling God has abandoned you. No. No, he has not. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So as I bring this message to an end tonight, I'm going to pray for some of you. In the Isaiah 41 verse 10, it says, So do not fear. Did you hear that? So do not fear, my beloved, for I am with you. God is telling you, so do not be afraid. I am with you. No matter what you are going through, God is with you in that journey. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Hallelujah. I will strengthen you. Oh, Shama Sandara, Bakuli, Kabara, Messiah. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Did you hear that? God said he will help you. I will strengthen you. See, I love the word of God. It's full. It's so weighty. Let me read it slowly. Isaiah 41 verse 10. It says, so do not fear. Fear is of the devil. It's not of God. For I am with you. God is talking to you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you, says the Lord. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Glory be to God. So do not be afraid, for I am with you, says the Lord. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Those who know their God shall be strong, and they shall do mighty exploits. I will strengthen you. I will help you, says the Lord. God is telling you what a beautiful word God is giving you of reassurance. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the, to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. So what you are going through now is called crushing of the spirit. Your heart is crushed. You feel dejected. You feel you are a failure. You feel that nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. God loves you. He said, I'm with you. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will be with you in the time of trouble. That's God's promises for you. You see, we are loaded. Loaded. Don't let the devil come and tell you, kill yourself. Throw yourself. Look, money, what I've come to realize is you can be a billionaire, a trillionaire and still be depressed. You understand? You can still be, you can be uh, a very successful person. And still that pain is still there. Some people, they carry this pain from their childhood. There are things that happen in their childhood that they are now able to walk through. That now, 
Every time they look back, it's hunting them. It's hunting them. But our God, I want to tell you that our God is a God of second chance. Maybe you've killed somebody mm -hmm. and you're feeling guilty. David in the Bible, he killed. <laughs> Moses killed. But because they, they, both of them were quick to repent, God gave them second chances. So don't, there's no case. Look, I don't care what situation you are. Don't throw in the towel. Don't let the devil dictate to you. God loves you. All you require is you go on your knees. Just say, Lord, I am sorry. Sincerely from your heart. Lord, I am sorry. I turn away from my wicked ways. Lord, come into my heart. In the name of Jesus. When you say all these things, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us. In this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Why we are still sinners, Christ died for you and I. Don't give up hope. God loves you. Your hope is, your future is beautiful. Your hope, future is glorious. Look, you might think that somebody has left you. Or oh, somebody, your loved one dies. God always has somebody for you. I pray you will not close your eyes when God sends your own deliverer to you. When God, when your time of your Kairos time comes, may you not close in your heart, hard in your heart. God will bring somebody that will compliment you. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. I'll keep drumming this. Don't listen to the devil. Depression is a blanket. It comes. It's a thief to steal your joy. Right? But God is telling us that his plan for us and thought of good. Hallelujah. You know, Psalm 30 verse 5, that I will sum up and I will close. He said, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor, his favor last a lifetime. Weeping may endure, weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing come in the morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for it, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor, somebody say favor, favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night. Some scriptures say endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. What you are going through right now, you are in, in the hour of the night. You know, every one of us, when we go to bed, that we are sleeping, that's the hour of the night. But we will always wake up. There is always a morning. And this morning is every day we wake up. Your morning is coming. Your morning of joy. Your morning of peace. Your morning of restoration. Your morning of advancement. Your morning of joy. Oh, la masa I want to pray for you now. Perhaps you are feeling broken. Perhaps you are in pain. You have, you have given up hope. But whatever reason why you are depressed, whatever reason why you are feeling hopeless, you don't want to leave. But I want to come to you now in the name of Jesus. And I'm reassuring you that there is a God in heaven that heals the broken heart, that restores, that brings breakthrough, that opens door that the enemy have closed. That it says our God is the one that closes a door. And no power of hell can open it. It's our same God that opens a door. And no man can close it. Glory be to God. So just believe God. Trust God. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you this evening for your word of God that has gone out. Lord as many tonight that are going to listen now or after into this ministration. Lord you said there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Lord, I speak healing, your word of healing right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing into your heart in the name of Jesus. I decree healing, restoration, wholeness into your heart in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as many tonight that are in desperation, as many that are in deep despair, Father, reach out to them, O oh God. Father, wrap your arm of love around them, O oh God. Father, may they know that you are you are their, that you are their lover, O oh God. Father, wrap your arm of love around them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as many that are sick tonight, as many that the doctor has given up hope. Where the doctor said there is no hope, that is where God starts. Where God said there is no more help for you. Know that that is where God will start, will, 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 will come in. 
our God is the God of the eleventh hour. He knows when to kick in. He knows when to come in. He knows when to step in. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, whatever your case is, maybe you are sick. You know what? There is a spare part in heaven of every part of our body. Our there is a there is a warehouse in heaven where all our body parts there is there. All you need to do what? Reach out in faith. Lord, I draw up a new heart. I put it. I take a new womb. Whatever you are looking for. is your heart. is your ear. Whatever it is that is sick. There is a spare part for you. Put it down by faith. Call those things as if they are not as if they are. Call it in. Just reach out to God. Reach out to God in faith. Cry out to God. Look, we cannot do everything by one. You see, cast your body onto me. All you are heavy laden. And I will give you rest for your soul. Look, if you carry this problem, it will crush you. But if you surrender it all, surrender it all, he will help you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Perhaps you are watching this program and you said, Oh, prophetess, I don't know this God you are talking about. There is a man. That was sent from heaven in the book of John 3, verse 16. It said, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on the name of, of Jesus shall be saved. So God sent his only begotten Son to us, Jesus. So this evening, say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come unto you tonight. Lord, I really don't know you, but I want you to come into my life, Father. Lord, I surrender myself to you. I yield my body, spirit, and soul to you, Lord. I humble myself before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, I turn away from my wicked ways. Forgive me of all my sins. Lord, from today, be my Lord, be my Savior. In the name of Jesus, help me, Lord. I feel hopeless, I feel lost. But Lord, help me. Lord Jesus, allow your spirit to enter me, spirit of God. May you enter each and every one of us. Possess our hearts. Speak to us. Spirit of God, you have been called alongside of us to walk with us. Holy Spirit, for that one that is feeling unloved, love, wrap your arm of love around them. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, if you said this short prayer, congratulations and welcome to the kingdom of God. Now you look for a good Bible-believing church and get yourself a Bible. See, this Bible is the word of God. This is the word. This is the compass of our life. Everything you need in this world is in this book. Hallelujah. It's in this book. Everything you need is in the, the word of God. It's in this book. This is the book of our life. This book God has given us is our compass. It will help you. It will direct your path. It will fill your heart. Everything you need. That's why it's study to show yourself approved. When you read the word of God, you will know. If it's to do with finances, there are scriptures that will help you. If it's to do with your health, it's there. If it's to do with your marriage, it's there. If it's to do with how to bring up a child, it's there. Whatever it is, this is a full compass. This is a full wall of God for us. Hallelujah. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry I've been so busy lately. and um, I've not been able to come to the school of uh, prophets. But... I promise you, I will come very shortly. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his light upon you. May the Lord restore you. May the Lord bring joy back to you. May the light of God shine upon you in the name of Jesus. May the glory of God radiate around you in the name of Jesus. May the presence of God never leave you. May God never leave you. Oh, may Holy Spirit never leave you in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you and it is well with your soul. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor uh, Pastor Femi, in the name of Jesus. Sister Marianne, Marianne, God bless you. And so many of you tonight that are tuning in, please help me share this video. It will, it will be a tremendous blessing to, to anyone that is hurting in this season. Look, we all go through period of, of, a period in our time that we hurt. I was hurting. We don't know. Look, tomorrow, we don't know what tomorrow holds for you. Then that is why you don't condemn anyone. You don't know if you see people just put powder on their faces. They are, you don't know what they are going through in their heart. 
You don't know what they are going through. You don't know the pain they are going through. You don't know why would they miss, uh, miss America kill herself. Frustration. Depression. The devil, the devil comes and whisper, kill yourself. What are you living for? Look at somebody has left you. Oh, nothing is working. You took up a load. Your business has fallen down. Our God is a God of restoration. Our God is a God of hope. And is our God is a God of our future. He said his thoughts for us are thought of good and not of evil. To bring us hope and a future. So God, our future is beautiful in his hand. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in. Don't let depression. That depression is a thief. It's a, it comes as a black blanket over your mind. It does not allow you to think well. But cut it out and tell Satan, get it behind me. My mind is on Christ. My mind is rooted in the word of God. My mind is the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Sister Monique, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Please help me share this video. And perhaps maybe share it on your groups as well. Because this depression, this suicide is a spirit. And we must bind it. Depression is a spirit. It's, a, it's an evil spirit that comes to steal, to kill, and to, and to destroy. Why would they whole? I mean, there are so many successful people. You see some actors, some actresses, they die. They kill themselves. Overdose. Why? The devil has whispered, kill yourself. Whose voice will you? Will you listen to? I'd rather listen to the voice of God than the voice of the enemy. If you listen to the voice of God, you will never be put to shame. You will never go astray. But when you listen to the voice of the enemy, the devil is a liar. He's the father of all liars. When the devil tells you to go there, don't do it. He's a liar. He knows there's a pit that you'll fall into. Please don't listen to the devil. Always listen to the voice of God. And also, if you are going through any depression or anything, or anything in your life, there is always one person that you can whisper, you can go to. And tell them, don't carry the burden on your own. If you carry the load on your own, you, it can crush you. Tell them, sister, I'm not feeling good, please pray with me. Or brother, I'm not feeling good, please pray with me. Minister to me. Or if you have a pastor, go to them. Go to people that can that can pray for you, that can stand in the gap for you. It could be it could be a spiritual warfare. You don't know. Open your mouth. The Bible said it said a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mouth wide. Cry out to God. Yeah, I mean we saw the story of blind Bartimaeus. If he had kept his mouth closed, nothing. He would have remained died a blinded man. But the man they told him shut up. He mind he cried. He shouted. Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. That's all we need. Mercy prayer. Tell God to have mercy. Whatever circumstances you are going through, whatever it is, no matter how hopeless, I'm telling you, even if you are about to take your last breath, call God, our God, our God of mercy, God of suddenly, he will come through for you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God loves you and so do I. Until I come your way again. May the Lord bless you. Please help me share this video. Shalom, shalom. God bless you.